For this lesson, we are going to continue practicing multiplying multi-digit decimal numbers using the algorithm and the rule that we learned yesterday and also thinking about estimating. And uh, we're doing this for another day because we want you to be good at it and to give you some extra practice. So uh, let's take a look first at the do now. So go ahead and uh, pause the video and do the do now. And when you're finished, restart the video, and uh, you can check your answers and see how you did. All right, go ahead and check out these answers and see how you did. And let's move on to uh, last night's homework and see how you did with those problems. Go ahead and check these answers and see how you did. You may need to pause the video so you have time to look at all of them. And then go ahead and look at the uh, next page and see how you did with those. And go ahead and check these answers real quickly and see how these went. Again, you may need to pause the video to uh, check first. Okay, so uh, let's move on to the lesson. So let's quickly review some of the work that we did yesterday. So we're going to start off with the problem, 24 times 63. So we're going to find out what the full digits for that answer is. So I'm going to have 24 and 63. doesn't really matter what order because they're both the same length. And let's do that multiplication. So I have 4 times 3 is 12. Carry the 1. 4 times 6 is 24 plus 1 is 25. Then I put a 0 in because I'm now multiplying by 20. 2 times 3 is 6 and 2 times 6 is 12. And then I add those together, and I get 2, I get 11, carry the 1, I get 5, and I get 1. So you can see that the digits of my answer are 1, 5, 1, 2. Now let's take a look at the problems. We're going to apply our rule from yesterday, and take a look at this first problem. Again, same numbers. But here we have two digits to the right and one digit to the right. So we know our answer has to have three digits to the right. So of course, that's the same thing as saying three digits after the decimal, which puts our decimal between the one and the five. For number two, we have two digits to the right, but none here. So I can write 2 and put 2 digits to the right. The decimal point goes there. And again, looking at number 3, 1 digit to the right, no digits to the right. So I have a total of 1 digit to the right. So the digit's going to be between 1 and 2. And then finally, for number 4, two digits to the right, two digits to the right. That means my product has to have a total of four digits to the right, which puts my decimal point there. And if you use estimation, you're going to uh, find the same deal. Uh, this first answer I know should be something less than six, so putting the decimal point there gives me that. This answer should be, you know, less than 24, but kind of bigger. Um, so 15.12 makes sense there. This answer is going to be basically 2 times 63, which is going to be above 120. This answer makes sense for that. And then two decimal points, two really small numbers, which means my product is going to go small. So the decimal point there also makes sense. 
So let's do one more example together, then I'm going to have you do uh, some on your own. So we're looking at 8 times 0 0.2. And again, I'm, I'm going to write 0, 0, 2, and 8. It doesn't really matter. The 0 doesn't really count here. And if I do the multiplication, right, I just get 2 times 8 is 16, right? And then I'm kind of done. So my digits are 16, but because I have one decimal place to the right of this factor, my answer has to have one digit to the right. So my answer is 1.6. And does that make sense? Sure. Because I know my answer has to be kind of small because I'm not multiplying it by 1. I'm multiplying by something less than 1. Um, it's a pretty small decimal. So yeah, 1.6 does make sense. All right, so I'd like you to do these next two problems. So pause the video for the moment and uh, do these problems and then restart the video and you can see if your answers are correct or not. All right, check out these answers. Um, you may want to pause the video for a little bit to compare and if you have something different, see if you can figure out where you made your mistake. Okay, I'd like, you, I'd like you to uh, check out the next three problems. These are similar, and what I'd like you to do is, again, pause the video and give these a shot. All right, go ahead and check your answers. Again, make sure you note where the decimal point goes. Make sure you didn't make any math errors in the multiplying process, because these are kind of more complicated problems. And um, see how you did. If your answers don't match, then you can check the work and see if you can find where you made a mistake. OK, so there's going to be an extra card towards the end of class, but um, there are some additional practice problems that I want you to do um, uh, attached to this packet and uh, if you finish those you can start on the homework but we will probably get the exit card started uh, with about 10 minutes left to go in class.